Today we're going to talk about the international segment of your career, oh, Robot. Yes. Uh -huh. And we know that you spent some time in various countries. So how did you get involved in international mm -hmm. nursing and what led to this chapter in your life? Thank you. At Cook County School of Nursing, we were awarded, they awarded a nursing scholarship to one of their graduates that was to be used within two years of their graduation. I was a fortunate recipient and decided to go to the University of Minnesota to get a certificate in public health nursing. While at the University of Minnesota, I learned of other international service opportunities. But first, I worked two and a half years at the health department in Rochester, Rochester, Minnesota, that is. That was a tremendous opportunity. Our maternal child health and pediatric physicians were all male clinic residents. I learned so much working with those families there and in that uh, community and with those help, uh, coworkers. There, all, I also learned about the Agency for International Development. It's called AID which had newly been established by President Truman. There had been a request for financial help by several countries floundering to recover from the World War, and monies were sent. Unfortunately, according to the President, those monies seemed not to get beyond the pockets of the government recipients. So, the Truman administration developed two new standards. American technicians would work with counterpart staff in the requesting government. And the, so we knew would be, there would be someone there to uh, carry on this work. And When you left the country. Yes. And secondly, that any country's request must contain three basic services. They must have uh, technicians in the areas of education, one, health, two, and three, agriculture. That was basic to be in any other country, and any country. Then if another c category they wish to consider, like Korea wanted help with their fisheries. That was fine, as long as any requesting country asked for those three basic services. And so you did um, begin your international service, I think, in Iran. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. And when was that? Was that in the 1950s? I was there... Uh, as a public health nurse from October 53 to June 56. My Iranian nurse counterpart was a district midwife, nurse midwife, located in Meshed. Uh, so uh, we were in a, a, like a province, provincial area, and Meshed was the capital. While I was in Iran, we initiated, initiated provincial-wide DPT and smallpox immunization clinics. There were still even occasional smallpox outbreaks that required a health care response. I recall the morning our team was preparing to continue immunization services in a village after sleeping overnight at a vacant compound. 
In the morning, we washed up at the one small stream flowing through the village. That is, humans used the upper part of the stream while the livestock drank at the lower part of the stream. Anyway, a village mother came out and said to us, can't you do something for my child who has the chicken pox? We were stunned and went about one half a block away with her to see this child whose face was covered with smallpox. Actually, she was in a recovering state, but arrangements were made to provide penicillin for this child. Our experiences in Iran were very elementary and rustic. Once we could only reach a village by a three-hour donkey ride. Six donkeys were provided for our team and equipment. Much of the work in Iran was quite primitive. The Iranian nurses, nurse midwives, and village health aides were bravely learning and planning their new public health services. I understand that after you left Iran, you did go to Korea, but you did return at a much later date to Iran. Could you talk about that, Rova? Yes, well, just a bit. Um, thirty years ago, about thirty years ago, this university uh, was approached to join a health faculty team uh, in visiting the University of Tabriz in northwest Iran in hopes of developing a health team relationship with the, between the two universities. How exciting it was to join the U of I team in Tabriz. There was excellent contact with the nursing dean, and there was a nursing, nurse administrator on our team from U of I Chicago. However, a public health faculty member was not available, so I did work with the home health aide uh, who did make visits and so on. I hope they were able to employ a person in public health. But soon after our visit, there was a political upheaval, and our tentative plans, all of them, were unfortunately discontinued. That's a very sad commentary, isn't yes. it, Roba? I'm sorry. But then, you did have some additional international service following your first service in Iran. You were in Korea. Oh. So could you tell us about your three years in Korea? Yes, that was so exciting and positive. I, my counterpart in the Ministry of Health was Mrs. K.C. Che, and the leader of their local health services team was Dr. Kim Myung-ho. Imagine my joy to learn that these two leaders had spent the previous year studying public health at the University of Minnesota. Yep. <laughs> Korea was recovering from both the terrible Korean War and the long Japanese occupation of their country. The Korean team had recently presented an outstanding one to two month training session attended by doctor, nurse, and sanitarian teams from at least one county of every province in this redeveloping nation of Korea. I inquired about plans for site visits. Our team decided to visit one province each uh, one or two months as we could work it into our schedule. We all learned much and continued this activity throughout my three-year assignment. We were told by eager county officials that you, 
from the health department are the only ones from the national government who come here to see our work and the issues we face. It was a joyful experience throughout in Korea. And it shows the importance of hands-on experience from those who are leaders. Yes, that's true. Now, I also believe that our current oh, yeah. interim dean, Misha Kim, was in Korea. Yes. Uh, about It's only about six months before I was going to leave, but two Korean uh, nursing students came and asked if I would teach an English class. Well, I said I don't know about teaching English, but if we had a weekly Bible study in English, that would be fine. I could do that and work with them. And, them. and uh, so a group was organized for this happy purpose. One of those students was Mija Kim, who later came to the U.S. with her student pastor husband studying at a seminary near Chicago. And Mija came to study in the master's degree class at the U of I College of Nursing. Eventually, Mija became our College of Nursing Dean and recently has again served as interim dean. What an amazing privilege to have known and shared with Dean Kim in our national countries for a span of 50 years. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing to yes. think that it, 50 years is quite a long time. Now, tell us about the whole adoption agency and your experience with that oh, agency. Yes. During the, my Korean experience, well, let me tell you about uh, Mr. Holt first. He was a fine man from Oregon. And somehow he found out that there was a growing problem of children being born as uh, Korean Americans. And that was difficult in a Korean society. And these children were being uh, uh, abandoned and so there was a problem and he set his mind to developing an adoption program with this country to help meet that need and they were this when I was in Korea this Holt Adoption Ag Agency was sending groups of five or six Korean American children to their adoptive uh, families in the U.S. These children needed an American escort. Once during my vacation time, I was an escort and brought a group of little children to their adoptive parents, their families, from who were in, from Seattle to Miami. I think there were some in Chicago in between. For this service, my air ticket was provided, and I could take vacation time with my family in Illinois. It's amazing, Robert, to think of five or six children flying in an airplane with you, you not Never knowing knew them, them. No. they not knowing you, and they're leaving their yes. home country and going to a new home. Yes. Amazing. Korea has a strong emotional pull for you, doesn't it? Um, yes. During... I would say that um, not only did I enjoy deeply my opportunity to live and work in that country, but I've kept in, in touch with Korean nurses and others uh, in the interim. It's been a joy. And in the spring of 2002, the Korean Public Health Nurse Association 
had a Distinguished Service Award that they wanted to give to Roba Kellogg, imagine. Anyway. I can imagine. Oh, anyway, so I did have the chance to fly over to South Korea and meet with that annual meeting and get that precious award. Wasn't that wonderful? It was uh, an award that was well-deserved, Roba. Oh, my.